Hello, Business 330 students. This is Professor Hassey. It is Wednesday, July 15th, and this is my lecture video for our class scheduled for last evening, week six, July 13th. And I hope you all got my email. I've been having internet connections all week, internet connection problems all week uh, due to my cable company doing some work in the area. Uh, and that necessitated me to call off class yesterday because it was very inconsistent uh, in the quality of my internet connection yesterday. So thus, uh, I'm going to be spending about an hour with you this morning uh, to uh, give you uh, the highlights of week six and proceed onto our class and we will meet at the regular time uh, next week on uh, Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to be discussing uh, uh, just assignment two very briefly. Then we're going to be looking at uh, that spreadsheet we were working on last week that I uh, had you uh, ask you to calculate the return analysis and we'll do that for you uh, in a, this video. And then we'll do a brief definition and outline of chapters 10 and 11. Uh, to conclude our work for this week. Uh, finally, I have posted our case assessment paper, uh, which is due the last day of our summer term, Sunday, August 16th. It's called California Best Trucks Case, and that has been posted to Blackboard, and I'd like you to download those files this week and read them, and we'll discuss that work uh, beginning next week. Uh, and uh, um, this is a, a uh, about a four or five week assignment for you to do to complete our term. So let's take a look at our assignment of last week or our, in, our assignment number two of last week. Uh, first of all, I'm not going to go over any of the answers because there's still a couple of students who have yet to post due to some illness and some uh, work related issues. So I have posted all your grades for assignment number two if you have posted them and uh, those grades are in your grade center. If warranted, I have also posted your the my solutions to you individually in your grade center. So you can look at those solutions that I posted uh, in regards to your work file and any uh, corrections you, you need to make uh, for that assignment. So again, assignment number two is posted. Uh, good work uh, by all. Uh, we had to work on chapter five, six, and seven, and you all did a very good job on doing the calculations. Again, some of us are lacking a little bit of detail in our answers, and I pointed that out to you in, in returning your work to you. But on the whole, everybody is doing fine. Make sure you check on your grade average up to this point in class. As of now, we have roughly 30 5% of our grade committed or, or completed uh, through this week number uh, five and into this week number six with some uh, some additional grades coming up in the new near future. Again, there's no graded work due this week. Uh, our, our work this week is just to uh, look at this material and uh, review the California Best Trucks case files. Next week, we have assignment number three, which will be a practice of this capital budget case uh, like a California Best Trucks case. So let's take a look at that spreadsheet we worked on last week. Let's bring this up here. And if you remember, we did this in class last week where we took, this is our beginning work of chapters eight and nine uh, and come going on into chapters 10, 11 and 12 and 13 next week. Uh, it's called capital budget analysis. And this work uh, where we took uh, various variables, we're going wrong the capital budgeting checklist. Last week we did these first four steps. I ask you to do the return analysis we're going to talk about risk analysis and sense scenario and sensitivity definitions. You won't have to worry about those calculations, but please know the definitions of those types of risk analysis, and we discuss that tonight. So uh, our analysis proceeded with uh, determining the cash flows generated off this $1 million investment based on these inputs here. And my, our job now is once we determine this $2.4 million in net cash flow generated uh, off this investment of $1,060,000, what's our return? What's our return using the four methods we talked about last week? Again, net cash flow is revenue minus expenses, less taxes to get net income. And then we add back in salvage after taxes, 
depreciation because it's a non-cash expense, and working capital as working capital as an adjustment to a percent of sales, and then all the working capital is added back in <coughs> <Excuse me. coughs> at the end of the life of the asset. Remember, the life is the depreciable life of the asset. So let's determine the net cash flow, the discounted cash flow. Again, our, our project WAC, and we'll talk about this in chapter 13, the definition of calculation of weighted average cost of capital. But the WAC in this problem is given as 8.83%. Here's the calculation right here. And again, we'll talk about that uh, in more detail uh, in a, next week. But we put that, that 8.83% is our cost of money. So what we're going to do now is determine the discounted cash flow of the future cash flows generated that we have budgeted and that we have planned and bring those back into today's dollars. So we use formulas, function, net present value function. We type in our discount rate, our WAC. It's called 8.83%. That's given in this problem. And then the values are from year one to year 10. The year one through 10 cash flow generated. What is this valued today discounted at 8.83%? So we hit OK and there's $1.5 million. That's our discounted cash flow. In other words, that $2.4 million in today's value at 8.83% as the discount rate, that's our calculation. So that's our discounted cash flow. Excuse me, I had a little bit of technical problems there for a minute. What's our net present value? Well, the net present value is the difference between the discounted cash flow and how much you're investing in year zero. In other words, we're spending $1,060,000 in investment in the asset and working capital in year zero. That's today in, in regards to this project. And the discounted cash flow of our funds to be received in the future, net cash is 1.5. So the net present value is the difference between those two. So $450,832 is our positive net present value. That's good. The internal rate of return is this return in a percentage. So again, we go to formulas, function, IRR under the financial function. And now all we do is we paint from year zero to year 10. That's the difference between this and the discounted cash flow. It's your discounted cash flow is year one through 10. This is including the investment. So all we do is hit OK and it's 17.03%. In other words, that's our return on this investment in a percentage. This is the return in dollars. 450,000. This is our return in a percent. What is our profitability index? Well, it's the relationship of our net present value to our investment. All right, it's a ratio. So this an NPV divided by, and then I'll put this in negative terms to wipe out the negative cash flow, and we get 0.43. So the profitability index is the ratio of profit to the investment. In this case, it's 0.43. And the payback in years is how many years does it take us to pay back the investment? The investment. So let's see that. At the end of the first year, looks like we pay back to 856,005. That's the investment less the return or the net cash flow in year one. Then in year two, We've now paid back and we now have 647,000 still to pay back. And now we just scroll this formula over a couple ways. One more. And notice at the end uh, or at the end of year one, two, three, four, five, we have paid it back. We've paid all, all the 1,060,000 because we've accumulated up to that point in time, 1,074,000. So we have a $14,703 profit, and as far as payback is concerned, 
at the end of year six, six or five. So how many years is that in payback? Well, it's one, two, three, four. And then what percent through year five do we have left to pay back? So what I do is I just take this amount that still needs to be paid back, wipe out the minus sign, and I divide it by what the cash flow is in year five, and I get, let's make that a decimal, I get 0.94. In other words, one, two, three, four, and then 0.94 of the fifth year, because we have a little bit of a cushion at the end. So it's 4.94 years. That's our payback, 4.94 years. It takes us four and almost five years to pay this back in real dollars from the net cash flow. So I wanted you to try to do that last week. And if you haven't done it yet, maybe try to do it in that file. Uh, both files are in uh, week five. So see if you can do that. This is the, the return analysis. In other words, we put together the capital budget. All right. And now we determine what that means. A return in dollars, percent, ratio, and years. And these are concepts that you're going to be using in assignment three and in the California Best Trucks case. Okay, now a couple of definitions from this week. Not too much actual work related as far as calculation, and I'm sure you appreciate that. Our big calculations are, we've already seen from last week, the putting together of the capital budget and the return analysis, NPV, IRR, profitability, and years payback. Uh, in chapter 10, I wanna cover a couple things in regards to definitions uh, that tells us additional information about a project. And in project, uh, in this project, in chapter 10, project analysis chapter, I want you to be familiar with break-even analysis, uh, the break-even analysis. When do we start making a profit? Some of you might have already studied this in accounting, but this is a good thing to know. How much volume does it take to break even, to start making a profit, to cover your fixed cost? Remember that as we've seen in the capital budgeting problem, there's two types of cost, variable, and fixed. Fixed costs have no influence on output. They're, a, they're like a leverage cost. So let's see how that works here in trying to determine the break-even analysis. The break-even analysis is defined as uh, fixed cost plus depreciation uh, divided by the contribution margin. The contribution margin is defined as the difference between selling price per unit and uh, variable cost per unit. That's the contribution margin. So let's say we have a, 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 a company here where the fixed costs are $4 million. The uh, f a, f a depreciation costs are $3 million. That's $7 million. And our selling price per unit uh, our contribution margin is 60%. What's our contribution margin? Well, what's the revenues minus the expenses, all right? And that gives us a, a percentage. What percent is variable expenses of, of, fix, of uh, revenues? It's roughly 40%. So that means our contribution margin is 60%. That's the difference between selling price and variable costs. So again, if you divide variable expenses by revenues, you get 40%, thus the contribution margin is 60%. So if I take 60% of divided into 7 million, our break even point is $10 million. In other words, we start making money if we sell $10 million in revenue. At $10 million of revenue, we our break even or our profit is zero. At $10 million, we start making some money. So that's the break-even point. It's a, it's, a, it's a way of understanding when we start making money. For example, uh, at the University of Laverne, uh, the break-even point in students per class is roughly about seven to eight. In other words, if there's seven to eight students in a class, our expenses are covered. If you have nine students, 10 students, you start making money. How much money you make is your contribution margin, all right? 
whatever you're charging for a class, in this case, we'll use the 60%. If I'm charging, if I have nine students in the class, that additional income of that nine student times 60% is our profit for the class because all our other costs have now been met. Our fixed costs have been met. So the break-even analysis is a very important number to tell us about when we start making money. So this is taken out of chapter 10 and I'd like you to, uh, under, to talk about this or to review this and its definition. When do we start making money? Here's a nice little chart about that, okay? When do we start making money? Right here. When our costs meet our revenues, anything above that, we start making money. That's our break-even point. So the break-even point is a very important analysis for some companies because you don't need a financial statement to tell you when you start making money. All you need to know is how many fixed expenses you have and uh, how many uh, uh, depreciation expenses you have, and you can determine the break-even. So let's take a look at our problem that we did earlier. What is the break-even point of this company? All right. Well, first of all, our depreciation is $100,000. Our fixed costs are $50,000. So that's $150,000 of leverage cost, basically called fixed cost, all right? Well, what's our contribution margin? Well, we're selling price is $20, all right? And our variable cost is $8, all right? What percent is eight of 20, it's 40%, how, how convenient. So that's 60%. So if I take $150,000 and divide it by 60%, which is our contribution margin, I get $250,000. So I know I start making money at $250,000 of revenue, all right? I think I just paused this. Let's get this back here. Here we go. Now we're back on it, okay? Let me go back to that. I didn't have this on earlier. So in other words, what's our break-even point for this company we looked at earlier? Well, we have fixed cost and depreciation costs totaling $150,000. We have a contribution margin ratio of our selling price is $20. Our variable costs are $8. What percent is eight of 20? 40%. That means our contribution margin is 60%, just like in the problem we saw in the, in the PowerPoint a few minutes ago. So if we take 150,000 and divide it by 60%, we get $250,000. That's our break even point. So we know right off the bat that with sales exceeding at 500,000 through most for throughout the project that we know we're going to be making money because our break-even point is $250,000. That's pretty good. Now, naturally, it does change a little bit with inflation, but we can just calculate this knowing that we're going to make money at $250,000. If our sales get close to two fifty, dollars we got to be careful. We know we're coming into bad territory. So that's an example of the break-even analysis. I thought that's pretty good. So that's an important characteristic to look, to think about is the break even point analysis. And that's in chapter 10 and it's right here. So I need you to know the definition of that. You're not gonna be doing any calculations about that, but I do need you to understand the calculations. Okay, now let's look at chapter 11. Uh, chapter 10, your main uh, discussion point there and, re and uh, study is the definition of break-even analysis. In chapter 11, it's rates of return. When, how do we measure rates of return? If we just saw in chapter, uh, in, the, in the chapter work of last week, eight and nine, when we did that capital budgeting analysis, our rate of return is expressed in NPV, internal rate of return, uh, profitability index and years payback. But also rate of return is also a measure of return in regards to the investment. If any of you own stock, the definition of rate of return is your capital gain that you make once you sell the stock, plus any dividends you received 
of the stock divided by the initial price you paid for the stock. So let's say I made a capital gain of $142.75. I had a, a dividend uh, rate of $5.68 and it cost me $150 to buy the stock. I made 98.5%. I'm the wolf of Wall Street. Holy moly, that's pretty good. That's the rate of return. And I need you to know that definition because it gives, it gives another way of expressing not so much <clears throat> of the capital budgeting analysis, but if we're investing in stock or we're investing in certain type of activities, what is our gain? The definition of return is gain over, in other words, the difference between liquid, liquid or selling price and initial purchase price, any additional income you received, dividing by that initial price. And I need you to be familiar for, with that. And these are highlighted by dividend yield and capital gain yield. Dividend yield is the stock or dividend you receive off a of stock divided by the initial share price. The capital gain yield is the capital gain divided by the initial share price. The rate of return is the combination of both, dividend yield and capital gain yield and that definition there. Need you to know those definitions because they're important. We're gonna be calculating that in our portfolios. What's our capital gain yield? What's How much money are we making over our initial purchase of the 100,000? Later on this term, we're gonna look for dividends of, that, of the companies that you selected. What were your dividends yield? A combination of both gives us our total return or our rate of return of that investment. So we need to know that definition from chapter 11. That's the only thing we really need to know. The rest of the material we talk about in chapters 12 and 13, and they all link over into that. So we have a break this week. We don't have to really study too much out of chapter 11. We just have to know what our calculations are. Here's an example, dividend yield plus capital gain yield equals our total return. Pretty good. Dividend yield plus capital gain yield equals that, okay? That's called our real rate of return, our real rate of return. If I ask you, what is our real rate of return? It's that dividend yield plus capital gain yield as talked about in your chapter 11. So please take a study those in your chapter 11, the definition of rates of return, dividend yield, capital gain yield. We will study those uh, uh, later on in our term as well. So two main points from this week we have to follow is in chapter uh, 10, understand the break-even analysis, chapter 11, the rates of return, and also how to calculate One moment. And again, the most important thing to take from our uh, what we're going to talk about in class uh, Tuesday night is this uh, capital budgeting return analysis, where we calculate these four numbers, which we did earlier in this video. So make sure you're familiar with that, know how to do that. Here's the template that is already uh, in your Blackboard uh, week five. I'll also put this again in week six, just so you have it. So make sure you review that, understand the definition of break-even analysis, understand the def definition of rates and return. Next week, we'll talk about chapters 12 and 13, looking at some examples in class. Uh, now, the last topic I'd like you to show you tonight is if we would go now to our Blackboard, as the sirens are on behind me. <laughs> Let's bring up Blackboard. So here's our Blackboard, uh, as you all can see. Remember, please take note right now in your report card, you'll see, you see your cumulative grade average. Uh, mine's an A. I, I better get an A or I'm in trouble. Your cumulative, cumulative report card uh, average or your grade average through this point in class, including the first two assignments, the discussions works we have been doing, that's your grade in this class up to this time. Please feel free to uh, make sure you understand that and see that in your Blackboard. I have added a different a different file this week. If you go to assignments and exam, excuse me, if you go to, where is it? Uh, let's see here. Just a sec. Got went to the wrong one. Hang on. 
Okay, here we go. Uh, if you go to your California Trucks uh, lead folder, you'll see now uh, on the left-hand side, a new file folder called California Best Trucks Case. Click on that, and now you see the files that you need to download to review to begin the work on this case. This case is due Sunday, August 16th. You have plenty of time. Uh, I will require two files to be posted in your final work for this case. An APA paper file, uh, explaining your conclusions and interpretation of the data, and a spreadsheet analysis file, the spreadsheet just like the one we just saw in that problem we did on the capital budget analysis. Just a little bit more, a little different, a little bit amount of time different, but it's basically the same template. So two files you're gonna be presenting. I've given you three files the basic case analysis, which gives you all the details of the case, an introduction explaining some of the uh, rules of the case, and deliverables, how to present your case. I'd like you to download these three files and read them this week, please. Um, the sooner you understand this project and begin to work on it, the better. Uh, this is our assessment case. It's required by our accreditation with WASC to have a case in finance that explains basically all the key points of corporate finance. This case, California Best Trucks case, defines that for our accreditation, and that's why you, we need to do this. It's a very important facet of moving on to get your business administration degree. Now, the two file, the, all the files I have right here, let's take a look at them. Here is the main California case paper analysis file. It explains the nature of this case. This is a company that's thinking about producing a new product. You as a financial student are going to analyze and determine which product in your interpretation you should recommend to Mr. Livingston at the CEO of California Best Trucks case. So I need you to review the history of the company, the explanation of their challenge, and note the six questions under issues and analysis. This is what your paper will be on. It'll be on these six questions. You need to answer these six questions from the data given to you and your analyt analytics in the spreadsheet. And that's the nature of the casework. Answer these six questions. Again, it's due Sunday, August 13th. And here's all the numbers involved. Just like the inputs we saw on that spreadsheet earlier, you have to create that spreadsheet with these inputs, revenues, costs, warranty costs, investment, it's a billion dollar investment, additional investment in years one and two, straight line depreciation method, salvage value, and how to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. We'll be doing this next week, this analysis uh, in chapter 13. So these, you have to put these all together and put together a spreadsheet to answer these six questions for your paper. And we'll go over this very closely every week for the next four weeks. And you, what I would like you to do this week is read these, try to understand what's being asked, if, what you know and don't know about the analysis, and we will start beginning putting these, these together into your case analysis. So that's what I would like you to do this week to download those. Here's another file that is part of those set of three. It's the project deliverables. It tells you the font, how I would like the font set up and how I would like it to read and look at, look like. Again, read this. This is very specific, but this is part of business study. What is being required by the employer or the professor and put those into a format that is professionally driven and give you the best analysis. So that's the project deliverables file. And finally, The introduction of the case, what you need to do, a checklist of what you have to calculate and get together in those numbers for your spreadsheet and how you put together your final report should be no more than 10 pages long and your, your exhibits will be your spreadsheet. And I'll show you how all this fits together and we'll talk about this beginning next week. But I'd like you to read these three files this week and get a feel for that. 
trust me, if you begin to read these now, even though a lot of it might not be make much sense to you, it'll make it easier to learn and to follow the case as we proceed over the next few weeks. So make sure you can look download these files. Okay, well, kind of a congregated uh, lecture tonight, but I think we accomplished what we needed to do. We looked at the return analysis calculations in that spreadsheet from the file file prior week. We took a look at the definition of break-even analysis and uh, rate of return. And we took a look at our new case that we have to work on over the remaining part of our course. In addition to our assignments, uh, the California Best Trucks case and begin our review and discussion on that. So thanks everybody. Uh, sorry again about to Tuesday night, but I think we're okay. Uh, we'll see you all next Tuesday night live and in color on Zoom. And I appreciate it. You guys be well, wear a mask, and uh, we'll see you all next Tuesday night. Thanks everybody. Adios.